Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm so glad you're with us this morning. Got a great show lined up. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard. Hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. Again, pretty comfortable. 85 high, low 73. A little on the warm side, but man, it's been some pretty weather compared to what we've had the last couple of weeks. It's been a very enjoyable week uh, so far as we're getting on the downside of it. Take a look at our river readings brought to us by Panama City, Coca Cola. We're looking at the Apalachicola, Blunstown. It's, it's still high. It's, it's at actually this morning 16.2, but look at it, it's dropping out. We got a good drop to it which is a good sign for the weekend. Now looking at the Choctatchee Caravelle, 12.7, slow steady drop, uh, and it's gonna be, again, both rivers are really high, but both of them are dropping out. I know catfishermen love this kind of uh, conditions on the river where we're sort of coming out of those sloughs and things sort of coming together. And you know, I got a, a couple good catfish stories, some great catfish pictures from that tournament last weekend over in Bristol to show you in just a minute. Take a look at our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Good, strong tides. Today, the high tide is right around 922 this morning and low tonight at 646. And like I said, the water temperature is right at 81 degrees. It's pretty steady. It went up about two degrees the last two days, but it hasn't been a big jump. The wind's coming out of the south at 12, straight out of the south. All right, take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Glad you're with us as always. We appreciate the viewership. Let's take a look at uh, last weekend. We had actually two tournaments. The one Eastern Marine put on down at Gaskin and Park. We were, but another big tournament was going on. <laughs> was a flathead tournament. We've talked about it for about a month or so up in Bristol. And man, did they have a turnout. So we got the pictures all set up. And here, here it is right here, the Legends. And it truly was. Legends Flathead Tournament. I want to thank Tommy Ernest, uh, Tiff Thompson, Ken Keel. These guys put it on. They get a lot of help there. A lot of good sponsors there at the bottom. And I'm going to show you the results. But I have some really good pictures uh, Tommy sent me. Well, here, okay, here's the, the final weigh-in. The big fish, Mark Ernest at 38 pounds. The veteran division, Eugene Ernest at 29 pounds. And women's, Selena Caps at 13 and a half pounds. Kids, Blake Sasser, 20 and a half pounds. Jeremiah Keel, 11 and a half. Third, Evan Dixon and Braylon Bailey at 10 pounds. They were tied. And the total weight uh, of the fish, it was 59 pounds. Mark Ernest, Andrew Sumner's, 48 and a half. And Eugene Ernest, third place. And you see, going down the list, I won't call all the names out, but you see the list there, all the way to eight places. Got a 33 pounds. So now we've got the pictures coming in. Uh, you see the size of this flat here. I mean, this is this was amazing here. Look at this big fish, and the way in was Sunday morning, and I, I had two places to go at one time, and I appreciate them sending these pictures. Folks, look at the size of those flathead fish. Is that something else? <laughs> he got he got another MC right here. She's taking care of everything. Wait them in. <laughs> okay. Look at that, I can't fish as big as that little boy. I love it. Okay, and let's see, I want two more, there's a kid's division. And let's see, throw them over your shoulder, get them like that. And, and they were able to give out, I'm gonna show you what all they gave out. One or two more. Okay, now, let, okay, <coughs> let me look up the, uh, the other thing, I just want to thank all, all those guys for putting on and the ladies that helped them, the food they had, and it was just, it was just phenomenal the amount of uh, time they went into it. I've got the list here where, where he, uh, got it right down here. Let me see how much. Okay, here, here it is right here. Everyone here, okay, here's the grand total. of it was 62 boats, 132 interests, $16,000. Folks, it's a little old town of Bristol. I got kin folks up there. I mean, it's not a metropolis. But everybody comes together with this kind of uh, family attitude and helping each other out. Sixteen thousand dollars of donations, six hundred forty-two pounds of catfish. But look at the most important line to me, right there in the center. We're able to give out three lifetime fishing licenses to kids. 
I think everyone who helped. And uh, is that not cool to watch? I mean, here we go. Uh, they put it on. They worked on. They work hard. These tournaments are, are a lot of work to put on. And, and then the participants come in, and then the sponsors, and all that money. So uh, all goes to good cause. So three kids for the rest of their life won't have to buy a license. Is that not special? Okay, got all kind of all kind of pictures to show you. I, uh, the chance of me getting through today's show will be slim, but we're gonna get started. Listen, this time, I've heard a lot of people talk about it, and I haven't seen that many myself, but snakes. The last two two weeks, people are talking about all the snakes they've seen. Here's a picture here. This comes from uh, Laura Bush down in Weewall. Moccasins are crawling, and I'm sure other snakes, due to the heat and the river levels are high. See, that's what happens down there. When that river gets high, they start moving. This one's <laughs> pretty lethargic. You might have just ate, but look at there, in the sink, at a fish cleaning table, a water moccasin. You don't want to reach your hand in there. You, so uh, that's scary. Thank you, Laura. Becky Bird, David Bird. Look at here, Martin eggs. These were the eggs. That, remember, I showed you the big Martin houses they put up every year. I mean, they have them up there. They get some great uh, activity with Martins. There's the eggs. They're hatched out now. Cool picture, Becky. And here they are. I want to know what's out there. I hear that noise. <laughs> this is Florida. We're getting into it. 2.45 p.m., sun out. Three o'clock, that storm, and is it, it is not true, that storm come flying through, and then here, 3.15, back to normal. So, that was good right there. This is a picture of, of the the tournament in Eastern Marine. This is Cecily held it. Cecily, and, and uh, they, they got, uh, I forget what place they did, but Jace, they got second place. On, so next time you have real-time fishery, Cecily will be there working until you saw her picture. Here she is. Dad let her have off. They had a good day fishing. I enjoyed seeing them. Okay, going back to snakes. What are you just talking about? Jim Balch, former with the Sheriff's Department. Enlarge, okay, enlarge and look near the base of the Crooked Creek. So we're going to blow it up. I mean, the Crooked Tree. Okay, you may not be able to see it. There, right there is a snake on the ground. Can y'all see that? All right, I can see it from here. But anyway, there's just two examples of the snakes out here. J.B. Hillard over Chalkatchee River fishing uh, after the weather cleared after the storm last week. They actually went looking for mullet. Now, he don't throw a cast net that much, but they found some. He went home and napped, and uh, so he's going he's gonna to clean them, and he smoked these mullet. And you know that's good. I love smoked mullet. In fact, I might need to do that pretty soon. But he added this. Uh, the Bent Rod Fishing Club, we talk about them often. They had their fish fry at the Life Enrichment Center at the Funiac Springs. Now, I'm showing this, so some of y'all may be joining up with them. Do this a couple times a year. The group is a component activity of the Senior Center, and membership is open to 50 plus. Public is welcome to visit and become a member. They meet every month on a third Thursday, and there's a way to get a hold of them right there. Or just call it. And here, I've been up there several times, and good group of people. You see the FWC comes, those boys got a free meal, they're gonna come up there. <laughs> and they have some good food and good fellowship. Look at that. Is that not cool? In fact, I'm gonna try, if the third Thursday, put that on your calendar, I'm gonna try to uh, get back up there all, as often as I can and try to, I try to coordinate when they have a fish fry, but if not, I just go see everybody. But every community here in the Florida Panhandle in some form or fashion, so they have some kind of fishing club or, or outdoor club, and it could be done, and it, it's just really good. Meet on the third Thursday, always a good time to meet. Let's take a break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Y'all are so good about giving me some good feedback, and by the way, if you've emailed me something or texted me something or whatever, left me a message, and I have not returned it or answered it, please do it again. On occasion, uh, it falls through the crack. I, over, the, over the years, I, you know, I get quite a few and I try to answer 100% of them, but sometimes they stack up on me. I try to go down, down the list and I may lose it. So if you send me something, I know a couple of y'all have, and I uh, haven't responded, send it again. It won't hurt my feelings. Okay, and here's one talking about feedback. Norman Thibodeau, the Thibodeau, <laughs> talking about a fishing family, the Thibodeau's right here. He sent this. Uh, last week, when we had that, <clears throat> our guest, Wish Upon a Starfish, he said, what a great show this morning, Wish Upon a Starfish. The show really brought me down to earth. Such a great organization. Thank you, Norman. And uh, I, a lot of people <coughs> responded to that show in, in a positive manner, so I, we appreciate it. And talking about doing things positive, here it is, this coming weekend, 
the Memorial Brim Fishing Tournament Fish Fry, the Shout Out Shriners, Howard Creek. It's the last time I'm going to talk about it now. But uh, you can go down there and get a plate. If I was in town, I'd run down there and get a plate. It's good. I've a lot of folks down there. And that bottom line is small print. All proceeds benefit the Shout Out Shriners, and they're not, they're not tax deductible. Huh, I thought they were. But anyway, you know all the good things they do for young people. Uh, Dominic Peck, okay, this is Jeff's son. I hope everyone is right for Mother's Day. A beautiful evening to go fishing at Lynn Haven Bayou Park and Preserve and check out the amazing fish that we caught. Uh, we have so much in this world to be grateful for that a lot of people unfortunately don't get. Now, is that not correct? I mean, we have so much to be thankful for. Never take anything for granted no matter what we're doing. Ever get time to do anything outside of your busy schedule? Do something you really enjoy, something because you don't know if you get an opportunity to ever do it again. So very good insight for a young man. Dominic, good job there, nice fish, and I know you had a good time. So keep doing that. 10 years ago, my Facebook member of May 2014, 10 years ago, what was I doing? I wasn't doing a TV show that morning. What's remarkable about this is uh, really, of course, I am, uh, just kidding, but the beach behind me, after the hurricane, folks, it wiped away most of that beach. It's sort of coming back now, but it's, it's not the same, that, that, which is sad. But a lot of that sand just wiped out. Gloria Turner, uh, we used to hear a lot from her. I haven't heard from her lately, but okay. And this is interesting. Gloria's a good fisherman. After a not so good Spanish mackerel season, I now have been catching at least one to three keeper trout each trip out. One that caught this 24 incher. Got so excited, hoping my line wouldn't break. Don't we know that feeling? Please don't break. This one was my first catch that morning, caught around 7 a.m. on a Paul Brown Fat Boy, which is a good plug. Got it near high tide, near the shore. What fun. Hope all is well with you and your family. And here's a picture right here. Nice catch, Gloria. And so good to hear from you. I was, uh, that's interesting. When she was talking about, she had a uh, off season as far as spring, the, uh, the Spanish mackerel, this spring was a bad, to me, after all the reports I got, it was a little bit off. It wasn't, it wasn't a, I wouldn't say a bad season, it was just a little bit off as far as the catches and the res response I've got. And I'm pretty well have a pattern, this is our 19th year, I keep talking about it, I can sort of keep a pattern on the pompano and the Spanish mackerel, and, and both of them had a little down year this year. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, Tom Martin, uh, he'd been on a cruise, basically, I want to read all of it, he'd been, uh, he'd been down to, uh, he wore his Panhandle Outdoor shirt in San Juan, and uh, a guy stopped him in Boston and said he was vacationing in Panama City, and he watches my show every day on YouTube. The next day, we're in another port, St. John's. Another man approached me and said, he watched you so, he watched you so pretty good. I'm going to be famous. But what he's talking about, these people, yeah, he wears the Panda Outdoor shirt. And uh, Tom had been in a bad accident and lost, uh, lost a lot of weight and everything. We're doing well now. We're able to go on a cruise, but we got to see a lot of people to watch the show in Puerto Rico and San Juan. Okay. Uh, Robert Blackman sent this. Mr. Winston, my lifelong friend has been down in the Florida Keys for a few weeks on vacation. He sent me this picture today of last night's sunset. A wonderful Lord gives us breathtaking, beautiful sunsets. And uh, here it is right here. Let's see, I got it. Let me blow it up over here. Well, I thought I had it. I must not have copied it. Well, trust me. Okay, y'all trust me. There's a beautiful sunset in the Keys. And Robert, thank you for sending that. And uh, real good. Now, I have all my teaching friends. We, I used to really have a good relationship with the math department, social studies. I just swing by and see them uh, several, you know, just all, as much as I could, just check on them. But my, my former math, I want to send this to Amy Moody, who's a math teacher, I hold on to Tibbity, but I'll go and show it to you on air. This is uh, Tony Anderson from, Brunston, from uh, Bristol sent this, when math teachers start designing clocks. I got a kick. This is actually, this is true. This is the square root of all these numbers. Now, isn't that creative? So if y'all see Amy Moody, Amy Spurrier Moody, uh, tell her about this clock that we're going to try to get her for her classroom. I thought that was really cool. Okay, so I was about to catch up. One thing, I, we were talking about the, the Coast Guard yesterday, having them on, has so many good, good things to talk about. And I, had, I was talking about a safe boating uh, series that we did with our class. And I was sort of interested when I, we talked about throw, tow, and go. 
I, I thought about it a lot because they said I hadn't really heard of it that much. But it was so important. But really, I, as I thought about it last night, it was just on my mind a lot. That throw, toe, and go means a lot if you're in smaller boats. They're really big boats. You're not going to really throw much over there. I told them, but that's a, such a good slogan. I started thinking about uh, the, uh, the weeks and all that we taught the safe boating, and like I say, the safe boating week. And I'm going to come back and share a couple of stories that I thought about last night that was really important to, to me and our classmate and our class. We'll take a break and be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at one time today, 11.45 to 1.45, and make sure you get outside tonight and look at that full moon and just be thankful for all the blessings we have all throughout uh, the Florida Panhandle and, and with our, our family and lives we have and fam the friends. But anyway, let's move on. I got so much to do. I, I got a Diane Boyce sent this to me and it's in Walker County up in Jasper. I think it's up in uh, maybe Alabama, but it, it, well, let's give it a background. They were fishing and had a big catfish tournament. And, and this lady, uh, this lady, I'm, I'm going to read the whole thing. Walker County Catfish Tournament, uh, they're crying foul after a 70-year-old woman wins a tournament with a cane pole and a Ziploc bag full of gravy train. <laughs> so, so what happened, basically, they were having a catfish tournament, and, and this lady always fishes down here on, on this, in this area, and she won, she won first place. Everybody loves the lady, says she always fishes there. It was that cane pole <laughs> and caught her. And she got she beat first place out by 12 pounds. And they say she fishes all the time. Everybody loves her name, Miss Minnie. Miss Minnie sure can catch them. And, and they, they laughed at her and said, no way she'll cheat. She just catches, she usually catches enough fish for five people. <laughs> Brim and shell cracker. But don't you love that story? She won a catfish tournament with a cane pole. I love it. Okay, I do want to mention uh, real quick, uh, I, I, this got away from me, but May is Skin Cancer Awareness Month. Just be aware uh, of what's going on there. And uh, we've had Dr. Uh, Sonseri on, but they all kind of, you know, just make sure, check all the things on here. It's all kind of stories, connect with them. And I, I just pulled this up last night. Uh, but the one I really want to bring out, reach young people. If they have no idea that they are, are exposed to it, we didn't have that age either. So try to uh, reach out to young people, tell them to protect themselves as far as that. Now, I want to get to the uh, safe boating stories. We had, you know, having the Coast Guard on. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. I just, I pulled some up real quick last night. Uh, this was this week. Family rescued by Coast Guard after boat captain struck by lightning off Florida's coast. And uh, this was just a couple of days ago. And he, he survived. Fortunately, he survived, but it knocked a hole in the boat, and the boat started sinking. There's all kind of stories. And in fact, here's a picture of the Coast Guard getting out there to them. The lightning blows a hole in the boat, and they get out there. It's a nice boat. But there were so many stories. And when I, when I had the uh, outdoor class, I felt very strong about boating safety because I'd been heard of accidents and, and known people been in accidents. So there's sort of tell, sort of tell in on the story yesterday. The, what I did in, in my the unit, I, we had a safe boating class, and we you know, taught the Florida safe boating certificate. And we, I talked about that, and we gave them, I sent them off, and they'd get a little card. And they, some of them still run into me and say, Coach, I still got my safe boating card. But one of the, uh, what we did on one, on one of the days, we, we did, I kept a file folder full of uh, boating accidents local here in the Panhandle. And I had like 10 or 11, I would divide them up in groups of three or four. I had 40 some kids and put them in groups of three or four and let them take that boating accident, sit in a group and talk about it, how it happened and everything. And then they take turns, get up on the, on the board and the whiteboard and draw it out, sketch out what happened and, and uh, you know, different things. Uh, but most importantly, what would have prevented that boating accident. And they're all size boats, you know, a lot of, a lot of river boats, a lot of freshwater accidents and also jet ski accidents and people run into the jetties and all kind of, and it really, uh, I could always see the kids really would pay attention to it because number one, it's a true story, and number two, it happened in our area. So they really, uh, they were sort of surprised. One story I never will forget, I'll share it with you. One of the stories was an eight-year-old girl from, and this was a good while back, uh, from Lynn Haven, and uh, she was on the back of a jet ski with her dad, and they ran it. They were actually, dad was flying, and they, they ran into the side of a pontoon boat, 
and the girl, little girl lost her life. And we talked talk every year. Well, one year, and I forget what year it was, uh, when it, uh, we went over that accident there, and I saw a couple of kids just looking at each other, shaking head. I said, what's wrong? And that class, that particular class, would have been this girl's senior year. And my, some of my students had her as a classmate in the first grade at, uh, at, uh, at, in elementary school in Haven. And they remember her real well, and they remember when the accident happened. So you just never know. I just, those human interest stories, doing things like that, was always something special to me. Speaking of something special, coming up on June the 8th, uh, this is the Taunton Family. This is a newsletter right here. Taunton Family, 12th Annual Family Festival. This is, I took some pictures of it so I can share it with you, but it's coming up. You're talking about some good stuff. Uh, they have so many, let me see, I've got the, uh, here's a picture right here. Pull it up. The 12th Annual Family Festival. It's going to be June the 8th. You get a chance to run down there to it. Food, our, our church, and have a Methodist. And this is our 12th year, and live music, and just a wonderful time. Diana Taunton, she's been on the show before. We may get her to come back on. Our John Cannon on the left, and see the play area. Here's the next page right here. What wow, is cool, the graduating grandkids. Okay, this is third generation of the Taunton family children's home. The two boys and the girl in the middle. I remember when she was born, that's Marley. And that is Diana's daughter. And she's graduating from Moses uh, this year, a star volleyball player. They're going to play college volleyball, but is that not cool? Diana was, was there, uh, and this is when she was a baby. Diana was uh, at the Taunton Family Children's Home. What is she doing now? She and her husband are giving back. They're back down there, giving back to the community. So anything you can do to support this organization, the family and all. If you remember a long time ago, about a third or fourth year or so, I had Diana's dad. Judge David Taunton on, on the show, and we, we really, uh, man, it was just something special. All those years, the kids they brought in and just helped raise, as simple as that, and just the love and dedication. They always did a lot of outdoor stuff. You remember, they would always go camping and squirrel hunting uh, the Thanksgiving week, and it was always special. So anyway, got to start wrapping things up. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up tomorrow. Oh, I know one thing we got to do, real quick. Got to add a name, Ron, Ron Barlop. Yeah, he sent this to me, speaking of things. Uh, Ron Barlop, you are now in the pickle jar. Tomorrow I finish up on the pictures. We've got all kinds of cool things coming on. Memorial Day weekend coming up. So go ahead and make plans to do some good outdoor stuff. And send me your pictures and let's you know, share all the things we're going to do. Good stuff. All right, you have a great day today and enjoy the outdoors. Take care of it. Always do something good for someone else each and every day. God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.